This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for being here today. Would you join me in prayer? Dear Lord, today we gather here to celebrate this wonderful occasion and to ask your blessings upon it. We thank you, Lord, for your divine favor and for the many people who've worked, Lord, with their hearts, their minds, their hands, their feet, to make this possible. And Lord, today we pray in the days and years to come that this would be a place of blessing and wholeness and healing for all those who enter. In your name we pray. Amen. Done. No. Okay. It's still morning. Okay, just making sure. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, I just want to really thank everybody for coming out today. Uh, you know, this event and building behind us is extremely important to our community for so many different reasons. And I'll get into some of that here in just a minute. But, you know, really, and I mean this, every time that we cut a ribbon, and we've done a lot of that here lately, uh, we have a tremendous uh, amount of folks in our community that are not only leaders, but are friends and that really support what the mission of uh, Pikeville Medical Center, which is to provide better health care for those that we serve within this region. And I was just saying as I came up earlier, right before I came up, that the blessing of these type of investments over the past uh, several years uh, has been that even someone as myself, uh, I was forced to travel like so many other folks in the region outside this area for their care. And because of the vision of the previous administrators and board members and current administration and board members, we are now seeing more and more people able to stay home for the care that they're not only need, but should and are entitled to. So uh, I greatly appreciate you coming out today to celebrate the, uh, the opening of this remarkable facility. So before that, I um, have some technical difficulties up here as well. My, my iPad keeps falling apart. Before that, I, uh, I move on. Um, I want to thank a few people personally uh, for, again, continuing to support our mission and, and uh, always coming out to celebrate with us. And uh, they put this list together. And if I, if I miss anybody, then I would ask you, please raise your hand and speak up and uh, when we talk about partnership and friends uh, these are the folks that we rely upon every single day not just as a hospital but as a community in the sense of leadership and uh, to show uh, our appreciation uh, for all that you do uh, because today again is one of those days that you took time out of your out of your day and off your calendar to, to be with us so uh, with that said as I uh, State your name if you don't care, raise your hand so folks can see where you're at. But with us today, we have uh, uh, Kobe Hall with SOAR. Kobe, I saw it, there you are in the back. Thank you, Kobe. And then, um, you know, I, I can't say enough for our state leadership team. Uh, we have Senator, a good friend of mine, Senator Philip Wheeler here up front with us. We have Representatives Ashley Lafferty and uh, State Representative Angie Hatton. There you all are, up front and center as always. You know, I, I, so many times uh, I've called on our leadership. And every single time that I do, they not only answer my calls and, and respond to the text, but they understand the need of the people in this region and have worked so diligently and so hard to ensure that our region gets the things that, that it deserves. And for a state also, it's not just about a region, it's also about our state. So I can't thank you all enough for the work that you do and for always being there for us in our time of need. So thank you, thank you. Uh, we also have Pike County Health Department. Uh, Tammy Riley is here, Tammy. There you are in the back, back there, Tammy. Thank you, and again, Tammy, we appreciate uh, our partnership. Uh, you all have done a remarkable job uh, for our county in this uh, difficult time. Uh, 
We have uh, Pikeville's mayor, Mayor Jimmy Carter, with us. Uh, Jimmy, as always, appreciate your leadership. And uh, for those of you who know me, know Jimmy. We've been brothers and friends for many, many years. Our working uh, history has, has been tied together in one way or the other. But uh, Jimmy, the work that uh, you and the city council and commission has done for our community uh, is underappreciated in so many different ways. So thanks to you. And we also have our city manager here too, uh, Philip Ellswick, and, and likewise, Philip, but we appreciate it. Uh, also, Pipewell City uh, Commissioner Steve Hartsock uh, is here. Steve, uh, again, uh, I was joking with him a moment ago. I said you don't go out into the public at an event unless Steve's there. It's not really an event unless Steve shows up, so we appreciate you. Um, we have uh, the Mayor of Coal Run, who serves a couple different uh, titles, I guess. He also is a, a PMC employee here, so uh, Mayor Andrew Scott. Uh, is here. I appreciate it. And I thought I saw, they don't have it marked on the list, but uh, Commissioner Osborne, uh, you're here somewhere. I saw you. Oh, there you are. I can't, uh, Beverly, I appreciate you so much again for the continued support and the partnership. And uh, you know, all have been just absolutely amazing uh, to support our mission. And, and we appreciate what you do for our community. Um, before we get to the board members, we also have um, Dick Jarvis and uh, Todd. Uh, Dick and Todd, where are you at? I, I really want to acknowledge you because as you walk in this building today, and we really, if you're here, we appreciate you showing up and cutting the ribbon, but if you could just stick around for a little while and really walk this structure, it is absolutely amazing. Uh, a lot of extra detail went in, and, and what we find it right now is that during the pandemic, uh, sourcing materials is extremely difficult. As a matter of fact, uh, Dick was just sharing and we knew in talking with Todd that late last night they were actually putting the air conditioning units that we were expecting to show up at any time uh, on the roof. So they've been working nonstop weekends to make sure that we were able to hit our projected date. And that's extremely, the date was extremely important to us uh, for some financial reasons as well. So we appreciate the partnership, the hard work and all that Elliot uh, does for for the community and specifically for uh, Pikeville Medical Center. So, so thanks to you and your team. Y'all been great, 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 great to work with. We have uh, Regina Jones here also with Senator Rand Paul's office. Regina's been a great partner and, and uh, always calls to check up to make sure that uh, things are going well and if there's anything that the Senator or their staff can work on. So we appreciate that so much. Uh, Bob Shirtliff, I thought I saw it as uh, uh, not only as I recognize him as a board member, but also as a Pikeville City uh, Commissioner member as well. We appreciate the work of Bob. And then uh, uh, we have several foundation members here, but also serve in other capacity as well. Uh, one which needs no introduction, but has been a mentor uh, for me for some time. You know, I started in city government, it's hard to believe, almost 20 years ago, and uh, I've used this so many times. Uh, in, in a lot of speeches that uh, some very uh, fitting words, I guess, were shared uh, by one Governor Patton. And uh, so, uh, Governor Patton, we appreciate uh, our partnership. Uh, Patton serves on the Foundation Advisory uh, Committee for the hospital as well. Uh, but all the work that he's done for our state and our community, and then as a friend, and as I said early on, uh, half the staff now the administrative staff can cite the same thing is that you don't get if you don't ask and you get if everything you asked for you didn't ask for enough uh, so I appreciate that advice governor because uh, I shouldn't probably share that in front of the representatives and the senator but because uh, I never do that I always ask for the very minimum right so uh, we appreciate again another partner not only on the uh, foundation advisory uh, committee uh, with the hospital, but also for all the work that uh, Greg May does. Greg uh, is back here, not only for the city, but uh, UMG also took over the uh, uh, the contractor management uh, work for the hospital uh, a while back. And Lenny Taylor, who's here also, is absolutely phenomenal. So the role that they play in this facility, along with many other projects throughout the hospital, is absolutely amazing. And it's hard to describe the quality of work that they deliver, not only uh, again for the hospital but for the entire community along with 
you, you could about name a business and Greg somehow has some type of investment in some type of business in, in, in those fields. So Greg, we appreciate the work that you do for our community. Uh, and then another one, which a lot of folks, and that's what I was trying to start out with, serve a lot of dual roles in our community. We have uh, Rick Newsom. I saw him working in a minute ago, walk in. There's Rick. Uh, Rick, again, uh, partnership and relationship we have uh, with you on a business level, but also your willingness to serve on our uh, foundation advisory board uh, is greatly, greatly appreciated. Thanks for all you do. And uh, if you really want to be uplifted, all you have to do is uh, read one of uh, Rick's Facebook posts as well. So he'll, he'll get you where you need to be. Um, and then a great partner, uh, Pike County Board of Education. Uh, today we have, I love saying this, Dr. Atkins, Dr. Reed Atkins. We'll put you to work. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, Freddie Bowling with us as well. So uh, again, great friends and have been wonderful partners to work with. One of the things that uh, we've been working on for some time is trying to bring uh, increase the pipeline for nurses to provide opportunities within our region and our community to allow students to stay home for gainful employment. And uh, the Pike County uh, School System has done an absolutely remarkable job as partners in working with us on that initiative. So uh, we have more CNAs in the program now than we ever have, and that'll open up opportunities in working with places like uh, U-Pike and Big Sandy to educate those uh, students so that they can not only have a great job, but right here in the hills uh, of uh, our region. Um, and then also, uh, Brett Keene is here also. I just saw Brett last night. There he is, Brett, who uh, is the uh, chairman of the Southeast uh, Chamber of Commerce. So appreciate the job that the chamber does and the role that you serve for our community uh, in so many different ways. Uh, and again, they had a great, uh, great event last night. Very appreciative, very humbled uh, to be honored last night individually and then also uh, jointly with ARH and Pipo Medical Center. So and uh, what our employees and uh, staff have faced over the last year. Is there anyone, any uh, elected officials or leadership that's here that I left out? If so, please, it, it's hard sometimes for these folks to kind of see names and faces as you come in. See no hands. Uh, well, lastly, I want to thank our board of directors. Um, you know, I've said this several times as well, and, and look, you know, I've served a lot of positions and, and uh, on the state, national, and local level. Uh, I have uh, been on so many boards and commissions. And what I can say about the board of directors that are here is that uh, these are not only civic and community-minded folks that are, have served a leadership role in so many different ways, building our health care network for our region, but also uh, helping make investments that not only provide services that we're going to announce today, but also making investments and creating jobs throughout the region. So as a leading em uh, employer in the area and also as a regional health care provider with a higher, higher level of care for our patients um, is work that is commended. So I, uh, I appreciate each and every one of you and for all that you do. Uh, those that are here, of course, we'll introduce uh, Ron here in just a moment. But uh, we have John Labreche. Raise your hands if you don't mind. We have uh, David Baird. Okay, thank you, David. We have uh, Jonell Robinson. Everybody knows Jonell. It's good to see Jonell out today. We have David Collins. We have Mary Simpson. We have Joe Dean Anderson. Aaron Crum. And Michelle Hagee. And we have other board members also. Did I leave anybody out that didn't have marked? Okay. Uh, those are the members that are here. We had several that could not be here with us today uh, because a lot of them live in other parts of the region uh, that we serve, and then others are also busy today. So uh, we appreciate the work and all that they do. So let me just give you a very brief uh, description of what's going on today, and then um, I want to bring up Dr. Aaron Crum, and he'll talk a little bit about the services. So, you know, our mission four years ago, and it's hard to believe that it's been four years, but four years ago was really to improve and expand the access to rural health care uh, or health care in the rural region. So we've done that by multiple investments, and sometimes you know, we show up at these events so often we kind of forget the millions of dollars and the type of services that we have made investments in. But just in the last four years, we have either opened or have under construction 
a $20 million project with our Leonard Lawson Cancer Center expansion. And uh, again, want to thank our representatives and, and, and Senator for uh, supporting those projects and helping with uh, also our federal partners for uh, federal funds, because most of these projects have been either subsidized or paid for by various grants. We've had a, uh, our $35 million uh, heart and vascular center uh, completed and open. We've had the Appalachian Valley Autism Center, which is the largest ABA center in the nation. We had the Mark Martin Primary Care Center, the Whitesburg Specialty Care Center, the Williamson's Primary and Specialty Care Center, our main campus primary care, our Prestonsburg, our first primary care in the region, and also we offer specialty care and urgent care uh, there as well, our first urgent care, I should say. And then, as I mentioned earlier, because of Reed and, and uh, Freddie, we opened, uh, also offered our Healthy at School initiative in uh, Pike County. So, uh, and we've also offered that service, by the way, to surrounding counties as well, if they elect to, uh, uh, to want to participate. Uh, but also, we are under construction right now, the region's first children's hospital with the Metu Children's Hospital, which is scheduled to open in December. So when you look at today's announcement and why we're here to cut the ribbon and celebrate, again, this is our first urgent care in Pike County, uh, which is not only an urgent care, but it's urgent care and wellness center. Uh, and it will serve our region very well, as Dr. Crum will talk about here in a moment. But um, these are just a few projects, a, lo a lot of investment, a lot of jobs created, and certainly a lot of services. Uh, but when you also look at our, this facility, what we plan on offering is not just urgent care here, which we will be uh, open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., uh, seven days a week. Uh, we'll be combining a couple of services that were in other facilities. We'll also be making it a little bit more convenient. So when we look at things that uh, Dr. Crum will describe and introduce, family practice, OBGYN, telemed, uh, pediatric care, labs, and x-ray service, uh, a full gamut of services that where people not only during the daytime but on uh, nights or evenings and weekends will not have to worry or rely just upon going to the ER. They'll have a facility that they can uh, go to that will uh, not only be nice but be staffed with outstanding some of the, uh, the nation's and state's certainly leading providers. Um, so I want to, before I close my remarks out and have Aaron come up, I want to also thank a few other folks uh, for this because as you actually walk and we want you to stay to walk through the building uh, this is something unique out of all those projects I said this yesterday this is actually uh, besides the Ava Center and that's got some personal attachment but besides the Ava Center this is my favorite project and because of what it means to the community where it's located and what you'll see on the inside uh, as uh, Steve Hartsock said a moment ago it's like walking in one of our clinics but better so I want to thank uh, Kansas Justice, her and her team. I mentioned Lenny earlier uh, and their, his team. UMG, they've done an absolutely amazing job. Uh, our administrative and, and clinical staff that uh, Dr. Crone will announce here in a moment, they actually helped. Uh, one of the things that we do different now is that we sit down anytime we have a project with the actual providers that we'll be using and uh, we ask for their input to help design. So I appreciate your input. And uh, so it takes a team. Uh, our model here at PMC is together we rise and I think as you'll see inside what we have uh, grown from the ground up is impressive and something to be uh, admired. So without further ado I'd like to bring up uh, Dr. Aaron Crum who's our Chief Medical Officer and our Assistant CEO and uh, he'll do a little introductions and a couple of additional cleanup work. Dr. Crum. Oh, thanks Donovan. Thank you guys for being here today. Donovan's right, this is an incredible um, space. It's an incredible place, the location works. And as you see, when you stick around and look through it, it's really impressive. Um, it, uh, it's actually more than I thought that it could be. Um, and it's also our first kind of step towards the wellness concept. So we do, we do a lot of things really good at the hospital uh, as far as both inpatient and outpatient care. Um, but this is the first place where we've really put um, the concept of wellness in one area that you know we still do a lot of primary care in other areas great but this is a uh, kind of a one-stop shop if you will <clears throat> and the other thing that's important about it is that this is going to be a tremendous success and I know it's going to be a tremendous success because when you look at the uh, services that we provide and the people that are providing those services it's a little bit unique for us and that when I look down through it 
uh, almost almost everybody that's on the list of who's going to be providing services here has been here as longer longer than I have. I'll, I'll call a few of them out and make fun in a bit, um, but it's a really good roster of people that are providing all of the services in the areas. So I'll just start with, you know, we're going to do OBGYN here, and as you probably know, we do that uh, in the hospital clinics, and we've done that off-site as well, and we'll have Dr. Maggard, and we'll have Crystal Green, who the whole community knows, and I would tell you that Dr. Maggard's probably the busiest OBGYN. She's the busiest OBGYN I've ever heard of, so I don't have any great data, but uh, she's unbelievably busy and unbelievably talented. She has that uh, patient load for a reason, and she's been here uh, in the area at least exactly as long as I have because we went to residency together so uh, you know it's a great product and it always has been um, in addition to that uh, Donna mentioned that we do healthy at schools and that's our telemedicine uh, product that we do and, it, and it's a great program it, it really is and it's going to expand so we have other opportunities we have other uh, projects that we're working on to try to get telemedicine not just in the region but actually all throughout the state that we'll provide and we'll provide that right out of this building and right now our, our healthiest schools program is done by Vicki Carter she's one of our nurse practitioners but also when I came here she was working here on labor hall so uh, you know that's a long-term employee someone who's vested in the region she's always worked at Pikeville Medical Center so uh, you know that's a great product I know it's going to succeed um, pediatrics and I always say this um, and I believe it's true we have the nicest group of pediatricians I've ever met in my entire life um, and you know and they're also very good but uh, but to have that combination is pretty impressive and you know having the access to our pediatricians here and then also having what we're going to do at the hospital with our children's hospital and our inpatient hospitalist program for peds really excited about the future of what we're going to be able to do here but i'll tell you the people that you probably already know we have dr gatakota uh, he's one of our pediatricians has been here several years now dr haritas uh, she's been in the region for a long time and at pikeville medical center now for for many years. We have a new doctor, Dr. Stein. Is, is Dr. Stein here today? That's it. Uh, vibrant, young, new, really good, aggressive pediatrician. People are going to love him. Uh, and then we have Aronda Wells, which uh, Aronda and I know each other from high school. So, uh, and she's been back the whole time, an incredible provider. Everybody knows her. So, you know, there's no, uh, there's no way that that product isn't, it isn't, it was already excellent but the ease of access and the great facilities are going to make that even better. We also have a big complement of family medicine here, um, and we have people that you know very well. We have Dr. Shirtliff. He's a local kid. Uh, you know, he went to school here. He did his training here. Everyone knows Dr. Shirtliff, and, and he does great service. We have Dr. Watts, who's, I don't know how long now, five, six years you've been with us? Uh, okay, four. I, I thought it was five or six, but she's developed a tremendous practice, a great following. And, uh, and does some uh, does some things outside of just general family medicine as well. Um, we have Benita Amick. She's one of our uh, nurse practitioner providers who has one of the busiest practices that you can possibly have. Everybody knows Benita. She bends over backwards to do everything for her patients and for the staff. Um, and we have Jamie Newsom, uh, who has been a longtime provider for the region. Almost everybody knows or have heard of Jamie, and uh, he's going to be in this location as well. He has a busy practice. The thing that we're going to do a little bit different is that we're going to move into true urgent care. And I think that most people here know that we've had uh, Stephanie and Rebecca uh, at Walmart, and they have a tremendously uh, busy uh, Walmart practice. And uh, that's going to move over here and be part of urgent care as well. And then we're going to have a complement of uh, um, mid-level providers, uh, our nurse practitioners and physician's assistants, um, that come through the ER training background to be able to provide true uh, emergency level services um, in, in this facility. So we'll be able to do x-rays, we'll be able to do suturing, we'll be able to do splinting and all those types of things uh, to allow people uh, to get in and out a little bit quicker and a little bit easier and uh, then to directly access the specialty care that you would need after that. So, you know, the, the building's going to be incredible. You're going to be super impressed. Uh, what I would encourage you to do, there's a bunch of these providers here. Uh, take the time to say hello to them, to meet them. They really are something else. Yep. Yeah. <laughs>
think they're telling me to be quiet. Um, <laughs> so without further ado, I, I'll, I'll introduce our, our board chairman, uh, Ron Burchett. We could have sung him down, I guess. Well, this is a busy uh, intersection here. And of course, that uh, is by design, not by chance. The Buckley's Creek intersection over here, I think, uh, what do we say, Donovan, is the third busiest in the state? Yes, it is. Third busiest intersection in the entire state of Kentucky. And all of you know who frequented this area here, uh, how busy this, this area is here. Um, and you should know, Angie and Ashley and, and Philip, that if you were willing to stand out here on the curb on a long weekend, like Friday through Sunday, you'll be able to wave and make eye contact with every voter in your district. <laughs> They'll all pass through here. We want our health care facilities to be visible, but more importantly, we want them to be accessible to as large a portion of our community as possible. Health care hasn't always been accessible in the mountains. Uh, I'm reminded of a couple of stories from the history of the Pitlow Medical Center. When I speak at one of these events, I like to wax philosophical and also uh, bring a little history. In 1927, a nurse carried a patient five miles, and it, and it wasn't Cheryl Hickman, but uh, <laughs> the lady's name was Sally Baker. Carried a patient, not a child, but a full grown woman, five miles over the mountains to a waiting automobile to take her to a hospital. A common form of transportation to the hospital in those decades was a rock sled. Rock sleds are commonly used in mines at that time and uh, they use rock, rock sleds to bring patients to the hospital. Often a boat on the Levisa Fork was used to transport patients and they would dock. I've seen some old pictures. There used to be a, a boat dock right about where the parking lot is that's beside the Pike County Detention Center. Uh, when the river went through there, and it was a lot bigger than, than we've known it, uh, the boats would come through there and they could dock there. And they brought patients in that way. And then there's this case. I'm reading now an excerpt from uh, one of the history books I have on the uh, hospital. It says, when a nurse on a Goodwill hike discovered in a one-room cabin a mountain family with three children, two boys and a girl, ages four to eight. The father was a hopeless cripple from birth. The three children were sick with typhoid and for days had been without medical care. The nurse reported the situation to Dr. Thomas Ashley, a member of the board of directors. He and some Pikeville businessmen walked more than 12 miles over the mountains and carried the children in stretchers to the river. Then they tied two flatboats together and rowed them across the river to a waiting vehicle, then to the hospital where they were given 13 weeks of medical care. Health care in the region has seen tremendous advances since the 1920s and 30s these, when these stories that I've told you about occurred. But as recently as in the 1970s and 80s, when getting to health care was less of a struggle, the delivery of that same care was still an issue. During that time, if you or your child was sick, you could probably get an appointment in a day or so, but after arriving uh, at a medical uh, facility or a doctor's office, you needed to be prepared for an extensive stay in the waiting room with dozens of other people. And if your child was not sick before they went to the facility, they may very well be by the time you got back because of the contamination in the waiting room. This facility has well child and sick child uh, segregation here. If you bring a well child to this facility, they will not be exposed to children who are exhibiting uh, uh, flu-like symptoms or other sickness. 
The 14,000 plus square foot facility behind me was designed to incorporate services for pediatrics, which includes separate sick and well waiting areas, youth themed exam rooms, a laboratory for specimen collection, on-site x-ray, and the latest imaging technology. So what remains in the effort to provide quality and accessible health care to our region? I haven't specifically spoken to Dahlman about this, but I imagine that another facility uh, like this uh, might uh, someday be in the works for the southern region of the county. Um, as I, say, I haven't specifically talked about that, but if I know Donovan, that's on his radar somewhere. The co cost of these facilities is always a concern. But when the numbers get close, I'm talking about investment versus return, because the board has to always be aware and uh, take into consideration what are the investments, millions of dollars, go into these facilities? What is the return? If it's completely out of skelter, then that project may have to be put on the on the drawing boards for a later time. But if they get close, if the numbers get close, then what kicks in is need. What does the community need? And in that case, we ask the administration to come up with a way to make it work. And they do. Witness the Ava Center. A further need is we need more health care workers. Pilot Medical Center, along with our state partners and the county, are addressing the severe nursing shortage that exists, but there is also a great need for clinical technicians, and our students in high school need to be made more aware of the opportunities for good paying jobs in the health field. There is work being done on that. When I talk to high school students, uh, very rarely do they mention, at this time anyway, a uh, possible career in the healthcare field. It's just, it's just not on their radar. We need to do more to make that possible. The last great hurdles to health care in our region, I believe, is education. And there are two parts to education. The first is the individual education of our people about how to take care of themselves and their families by engaging in a healthy lifestyle involving proper nutrition and regular health exams. But there's another aspect to education that we still need to work on, and that is educating our people as to what services, health services, are available to them. For example, I don't think enough people are aware uh, of our Healthy at School initiative. From inside their school, your child can see a health care provider and their treatment begun. My wife is a teacher at one of the uh, county elementary schools, and she recently had a uh, in her throat uh, something going on. She thought maybe she was getting strep throat. She simply walked out of her room across the hall to the nurse uh, at that school, had a swab down there, saw a doctor on a monitor, had vitals taken right there in that nurse's office. The doctor uh, made a diagnosis and uh, digitally uh, sent a prescription to the pharmacy. I happened to be in town, so I picked up that prescription and took it to her. So in a matter of 40 minutes, she had, from the time that she first thought she had something wrong with her throat, till the time she had medication in her hand was about 40 minutes. People need to be aware of that. We haven't had the tremendous, we've had a goodly amount, but we haven't had the tremendous uh, sign up of people in the county for uh, their uh, child as a student to be uh, seen at school in this manner. But I think it's because uh, of one thing, I think it's because they think it's too good to be true. Uh, I was talking to a lady and she said, you mean my child can see uh, at school, can go into a room, the nurse's office, and see a doctor and get a prescription and, and be diagnosed there? Yeah, yeah, that can happen. We just need to get the word out on that. We need to get uh, more education. The facility behind me is the headquarters for a large part of that initiative. So on Monday, this facility will open to the public and begin a new chapter 
in the accessibility and delivery of health care in this region. And I hope you are as excited as Pipeline Medical Center at the new beginning as we together, we watch health care in the region rise to new heights. Thank you. We're extremely, uh, extremely, as I mentioned earlier, extremely blessed with the board that we have, but even more so, as you just heard, with the leadership that we have on the board. So, Ron, thanks uh, for, to you and for all that you do on behalf of uh, Pipeline Medical Center and the 3,000 employees that we represent. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the ribbon cutting now. And again, I would ask if, uh, if, you, if you have a few minutes, we'd love to give you a tour of this magnificent facility, and you're going to see uh, and one of the things that we often say is there's a lot behind the curtain that the public doesn't get to see uh, or appreciate of investments that have made, been made over the last uh, 20 years especially. Uh, it's really something to be amazed with. So uh, we're going to go ahead and invite uh, our providers to come up front here and our uh, board of directors and our uh, state legislative body representatives here, if you won't mind, if y'all would come on up here and just take a point in the line and as you come up, they'll pass out a pair of scissors for you. We'll cut the ribbon. One, two, three, cut. Again, this concludes our program for outside, but we would definitely like for everyone to stick around. We're gonna do the tours now. Uh, we would ask again, since it's inside, that everybody uh, please uh, observe uh, social distancing as best as possible and then also be masked.